Here we go. Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, folks. It's the one and only V, the Gorilla Economist, and I have with us the man of the hour who needs no introduction whatsoever. It's the one and only John J. Singleton, the man, the brain trust behind Privacy Fight. Folks, check it out, his work over at privacyfight.com. Learn how Privacy Fight can help you regain and take control of your privacy, your data, and your life. When, with that being said, John, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Oh, pretty good. Thanks. I'm. Uh, I enjoyed the last show. That was interesting. Yes, it was. I think uh, we uh, we opened up a uh, a lot of um, what's the word I'm looking for, man? A lot of minds. We got a lot of people thinking, and that's yes. always a good thing, man. You know. That's the whole idea. Yes. Absolutely. So, uh, what do you got lined up for today, man? What do you want to delve into? There's so many things happening globally, and uh, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of paranoia around the world, and oftentimes, in the midst of fear, people tend to forget. Uh, the most, uh, the more important things that are uh, not only rudimentary to their existence on this planet, but also essential for their life in navigating the claptrap that is the bureaucratic mm. security state in which we live in, man. Yeah, so, security uh, state. Yeah, my yeah. Uh, my bias on everything is how it's going to affect privacy. Yep. <laughs> it's always about that because really that's where the money is. Correct. If someone can get your data. Um, yeah, absolutely. This, Look at, now I'm not anywhere an expert on these viruses, but I keep seeing this, this virus stuff and I'm seeing over the years, probably since the eighties, I started real, you know, seeing this in the news, just like you probably, and this coronavirus, uh, that was around in the sixties. Yep. And I'm, I'm just seeing how the coronavirus, I think it appears to be, um, a weapon, just like you would use war. You could yep. use a biological weapon like a virus, and there's different groups of this virus. There's lots of different viruses we've heard over the years. They're all coronaviruses. There's yep. several, long list of them. Mm -hmm. But but I think um, uh, what it, this how this affects people in terms of privacy is when you are denied access to something like not yet so much travel. I think that's coming, but access to certain things in society like the public school system and so forth. If you're not vaccinating. And I think your children, and I think this coronavirus is a way to push that policy or push that agenda and, and laws and so forth. I, I, the, man, I, I'm actually going to be speaking about this whole coronavirus over on the Patreon and stuff, but the more I'm looking into it, and I have a, a, a biology background before I got into uh, you know brokering and, and, and wealth management and all that other stuff that I do, and, and banking and all that, but the more I look at this man, the more the more of a psyop it looks like to me. It, yeah. Are there people dying from the coronavirus? Yes. Is it as overblown right. as uh, as the as as, uh, as the alt media and even mainstream media and even the Chinese media reporting? No, I don't think so. There is a great deal of overreaction. Look, when when you see a government that goes this far to to clamp down on dissonance, because folks. What's happening globally? Well, globally, we're having a populist revolt. We're having a populist mm -hmm. revolt in Europe. We're having a populist revolt in North America. We're having a populist revolt in Australia. And they're in the, in the stages. And on, the, on the tidal wave, John, of, of, of Taiwan, on the tidal wave of Hong Kong, the protests that happened over there, the fact that the Chinese party uh, uh, and, and party sympathizers were booted out of the Taiwanese election as of late, there was a major protest that was going to happen in the Wuhan, Hubei province region, and Shenzhen and Guangzhou, and all the industrial uh, places right there in China. And how convenient, yes. out of nowhere, this virus happens. Has there been people dying? Yeah. But you know what? How I know this is a, a big psyop and it's a big ruse? You know, mm -hmm. how many interviews have been done already with people that are quote unquote infected with coronavirus who are quote unquote not Asian, but are actually Americans? who are either quarantined on that boat or they're, they're now quarantined in mainland USA. They've been, you know, out of, uh, uh, um, um, you know, they're basically not Chinese citizens, right? They're not Chinese. Right. Look at the death rate of non-Chinese outside of China. It's yeah. nothing. Mm -hmm. No one. Zilch. Nobody's died. Hey, guys, you got to remember, we are almost 60 days into this outbreak. This outbreak started in mid-December. People forget. We're almost 60 days into this. If this is supposed to be a global world-ending pandemic, John, how come we don't see massive infection rates exploding all throughout the world? You don't see that at all. 
Well, it's just enough to say that because that influences public policy. And then that, that's why you see it in China. I mean, I don't know where I, I looked at the origins to try to find out where it came from. I'm reading science journals and I'm, I'm thinking someone made this or discovered it and then modified it yep. and has different strains of it. And what yep. better population than the Chinese population to basically attack? Correct. The, the kind right. of system, yeah. I mean, I think at some point, th th this is there's several agendas going on here. You wanna you wanna get an economic advantage. You wanna shut down some factories. Here's a way to do it. That's already happening. You wanna mm -hmm. restrict people's travel. You wanna force vaccinations. And that agenda, of course, we can all see that. Um, and I think maybe there's an agenda for killing millions of people. And wh why shouldn't we do that? Because we don't have to use war anymore. We could just use a virus. And everybody says, oh yeah, it's a virus. They accept mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Whereas if it's a war, it's a political issue. It's a funding issue. Yeah. And, yeah, and they, you, know what's, yeah. you know what's funny? It's like, it's like you look at the concentration of death. The concentration of death is still, or supposed death, is still around the Wuhan, Hubei province region. It's right. still there. John, it, it, it's more symptomatic to me of a bio bomb, <laughs> some sort of yes. a weapon that exploded. Be it, and, it, and we don't know if it's, if it's, if it's, biological or even radiological what it, or I'm sorry, or chemical excuse me because my whole thing is this why is china so damn resistant from having other uh biologists and virologists and doctors and scientists into the very hot zone of this pandemic why are they stopping it why i mean think about it if you're a country where you're running out of masks supposedly if you're a country that produces 80 percent of all the pharmacology in the world and you're running out of medicine. If you're a country that's, that's running out of hospital beds, and on somehow and on your controlled internet, the great firewall of China, you have these these uh, these, these people that are able to leak out videos saying, they're, they're, they're saying, oh, it's all terrible, this, that, and the other, and, and, and whatnot, and, you know, we're all dying out here. What if it's all a damn psyop? Well, here's, here's what may answer it. If you interfere with the spread and the rate of this virus and how it affects people, if you go in there and try to treat it and, and interrupt it, you're going to interfere with the epidemiological study that's being conducted. And that's, yes. I think, what's going on. They're collecting data um, on people to see what happens. Yep, absolutely right, man. Absolutely right. And, 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 and they don't care if, if, if a couple of thousand Asians that are ethnically sure. non Chinese die in the process because I, I believe this is a bioweapon. There were yeah. two Indian scientists that have confirmed, and they redacted their story because of, of political pressure, not because of scientific pressure whatsoever, but the two scientists in India have confirmed that this is, in fact, a coronavirus that has four segments that have spliced in HIV uh, genetic code sure. into it. And this is why in Thailand, this is why in other places throughout the world, they are treating the coronavirus with a mixture of flu and HIV medication. That's and right. that is a fact. You yeah. That unless this damn thing is spliced, yeah. and it is spliced, and I don't think the death rates are as high as they say they are, dude. You don't but, see yeah. the, these death rates anywhere else. It's like in China they're dropping like flies. So is it really coronavirus that's killing them? Is the coronavirus a cover for something else? We don't know what it is. Could be chemical, could be biological. We don't know. But what John, you nailed it on the head. It gives the security state the only only advantage here is the security state. And it's data collecting and it's epidemiological studies. And the fact that right now, John, here it is. I'm on my phone, right? It was, uh -huh. uh, yep. it was, it was just said right here. Um, one of the news alerts that I just had was uh, the first 3D modeling of a coronavirus's protein structure has already been completed. Vaccine in the way. Yeah, vaccine on the way. On the way. <laughs> that takes years. I mean, there is no new technology that's going to get you a vaccine in three months. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But look how, if you, if you wonder about the other effects, I mean, obviously we can see, okay, they want to push the agenda on vaccinations, but look at what the coronavirus itself, just that alone, has done to the livestock industry. Oh, my God. Just that alone. Yeah. You have to ask why. What's going on? Look at what they did with the so-called pig flu that occurred in China, where whether just like in and this is the same thing that people need to remember from what happened with mad cow's disease, right? In mad cow's disease, whether the cow had the mad cow disease or not, what happened? They they called tens right. of thousands of herds in the UK. Right. They're doing the same thing in China, where they're right. calling a ridiculous amount of pork. So the food supply is being tampered with. On top of this, man, and, and, and John, here's the craziest thing. Who the hell, 
what is not to say that they are not radiologically or using energy waves, radio waves, or whatnot, directing these swarms of billions of locusts that have now collapsed the food supply of Ethiopia running it by 90%. And now I'm hearing that this, the, the, this, 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 you know, this whole entire swarm of locusts, numbering in the, in the tens of millions, is already made its way to the border of China. Yeah, that's God's name very is. likely. It's, it's like almost impossible that that's not happening deliberately. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and another example, I mean, look at uh, Bulgaria. Look, go look online and look at the, uh, what they did on the, the pork industry. Mm. So, so I've been following this for a while because my family's from there. And, uh, and, they're, and they destroyed the pork industry by literally going to all the farms and declaring their, their uh, pigs to be uh, you know, infected with something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they literally burned them. They put them in a big pile and they literally light them on fire. And so you've got to ask yourself, this is such a strong part of that culture. How in the heck are they fulfilling that? need in the market yeah well, lo and behold more imports right so someone mm -hmm. made a deal somewhere of course to sell pork from somewhere else <laughs> that's oh, all it was all i know is that smithfield pork is going to be busy uh, this coming season <laughs> in, <laughs> exporting uh -huh. to china uh -huh. you, you, John, here's another thing that most people don't realize do you realize bulgarian pork was considered and is still considered the finest pork in the world oh, it's so know. good i think it's, it, i believe it's bulgarian or romanian it's one of those countries uh-huh the pork is so good. It's one of the few porks that you could actually have medium rare. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that. Without it killing you with trichinosis or, or, or any of the other um, you know, parasites that we find in American pork. Well, somebody but, yeah. wants to pollute that. That's for sure. Of course. It's competition, man. That's well, sure. what it is. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we all fall for the ruse. So how do you deal with it on a personal, on a personal side? I always look at it in terms of like the other day I was dealing with a debt collector and I focused only on the data involved between the creditor, debt collector, and the, the debtor. And Explain it, that. It, it, okay. It sh I'll tell you what happened though. It shut down the collection process. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because, nice. Because the debt collector, they're all talking about, you know, you owe us money because we got the debt from so-and-so creditor. And I say, well, how did you get my information? How did you get my banking information, my tax information, my employment history? I didn't give you access to that. And how did you make an inquiry on my credit? And I focused the whole case on the data from the creditor to the debt collector. And they're not built for that. They're not, there's no procedure to deal with that. So they have to can it into like a, a category that they can't handle and they send it back to the creditor. And then the creditor says, no, it's a valid debt. And I write back and I say, yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how you disclosed my information to a third party and and who knows whether or not i even authorized you to have it in the first place we'll get to that later but who are you <laughs> <laughs> you see and that, shuts the, and that brings the attorneys in the law firms and now we comes to a screeching halt because everybody's like oh my gosh i'm gonna get sued for millions of dollars and it has nothing yep. to do with the debt <laughs> exactly exactly correct so this is similar to the vaccination because when you are being told you have to get this vaccination now you have medical data and you also have the promise of the okay the reason you have to get the vaccination is because a public health issue and it's going to cure or prevent disease okay guarantee that you guarantee that and you indemnify me against any damages or injury i may suffer from taking this vaccination and then Can't i'll it. consider it yeah and then give me the entire insert from the vaccination i want to see a mm. full disclosure and if i don't i'm not taking it Otherwise, you have all the liability and you simply put them on notice. Absolutely. And they don't want it. That, that's too no. much liability. They won't do it. John, and, he, and that's the thing. This is, the, so, so, this is what I love about what you do and what I do. Is it, this is what we try to teach our, our clients uh, is this. Folks, this entire system is, is, is the, the entire system is linchpinned on the one fact, and the, this is the only fact there is. They are depend on the fact that you believe them. <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> you believe them. That's how they got you. And this is what you know. When I when I start working with clients, and John, I know you do this as well, because you know we 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 share a lot of um similarities with our clientele and stuff. It's the whole system is fake. It's not real. <laughs> it's it, it's fake money created out of thin air to to create fake debt. And then they put they, they put you on the hook for it. It right. all depends on you believing them. And as soon as you start pinpointing, like what John gave an example of, you start pinpointing 
the weaknesses and the holes in their arguments by utilizing the very system of fear against mm -hmm. them, right. their entire house of cards collapses. Yeah, right. Y'all yeah, take the vaccination, but you're going to take the liability. And they can't. They can't. And, and when you want to handle my data, like uh, my chiropractor just recently switched to a, a big group. And so they're trying to make me sign a new disclosure with medical information. I said, well, my chiropractor already has it. And they said, yeah, but he's now employed by this corporation. I said, corporations don't provide medical services. Corporations have no liability to me because they're not alive. My doctor is a human being. He's a man. I can talk to him. But I'm not going to be treated by a corporation, and I'm not going to disclose the information because it's already been disclosed to my care provider. And they're like, huh? <laughs> you know? and I said, okay. I mean? said, but guys, I don't mind uh, disclosing it if you'll, if you'll accept all the liability for keeping it. And I'll tell you right now, it's not even necessary. So. Mm. Yeah, and then they, they mm. didn't. They just said, okay, well, step right and, this way, you know. <laughs> you, you know, and, and, and you look at these larger medical building companies and whatnot, they're sharing data with life insurance mm -hmm. companies, they're sharing data all along the back and why? Because at the end of the day, from your medical records to your court cases to your yeah. uh, checking account, all of it, your mortgage, yeah. it's all financialized. Yeah. You yeah. are the merchandise, folks, and this is what right. John and myself are trying to teach people to get the heck out of the way. You are what's being marketed. Yeah, I, I, uh, I set up a credit file for somebody recently, right? So we're, mm -hmm. we're working the file. We're building it and stuff. So we, we, do, we request a copy of the file. Here's what we get back from Experian. I'm holding it in my hand right now. It says, uh, first of all, they spelled the guy's name wrong. <laughs> so that's a problem right there because, okay, if you're going to be irresponsible with my data, you got, you know, you, you don't have any standing whatsoever, but now they're saying, okay, in order for us to give you a file, uh, the file we have on you that we collected, we need your government issues ID, copy of your social security card, your utility bill. Now see what these guys do. They don't need that stuff. Mm. They just want to collect it so they can sell it to somebody. Correct. So when, we, when I write back to them, which is going to be a very interesting letter, <laughs> fine, guys, but uh, I want a share of the revenue, and you're going to spell my name correctly, or you're going to delete the record, and et cetera, et cetera. Here are the conditions. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but I think we can use the, the privacy issue in a lot of things. In fact, my, my partner way back in the 90s, he, he would use the right to privacy in, in traffic tickets. He Ooh. would win. Because, like, for example, the cop would be looking in the window, and you actually have a right to privacy out in traffic in your car. So it's, it's a very strong thing, and it's funny because it's not even – it's in our laws, but it's not na specifically named in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's a human right. Mm. Yeah. So, but, yeah, if, you wanna if you're dealing with that stuff, I mean, you, you, someone wants to look at it in terms of what you're disclosing in the process and then make the other party liable for retaining – and using that data. And you want that party's data retention policy and all the privacy policy and what it, it is gonna guarantee to you as far as a data breach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That exactly. gives you a little power. And so you don't mm -hmm. have to deal with lawsuits and you, know, just, you just focus on that. It gives you a little power. So that way when you're dealing with like the school system and they wanna talk about vaccinating your children, make them sign a, uh, an indemnification agreement with you. Yeah, they won't. they won't do it. Nope, they won't do it. And John, here's the thing that people don't realize. It's like here's a little little insider uh, thing that uh, I'll disclose to you, and John knows this as well. And stuff that you won't find on Google. You can Google it all you want, you'll never find it. Uh, this is from guys who've been there, done that, and got the T-shirts. Guys like John and myself. And the fact is this: your social security number is not something that is used exclusively by you. It's That's used right. <laughs> by uh, various entities, various fictitious uh, um, uh, instruments that have been created utilizing that number. That's why, folks, <laughs> I can call my bank right now and get on the phone with either Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, or Wells Fargo, and say, if they say, "Hey, Mr. V, uh, how are you? Good. I want you to pull up my 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 account." Okay, sure. Because I have the uh, last four digits of your social, and I give them that. Then, then they want my date of birth, and I give them that. Then they want my address, and I give them that. Then I give. Then they want my mother's maiden name, and I give them that. And then after all of that, uh -huh. they finally pull up the account. And the reason why, and most people don't think about this, John. Most people think that's just standard operating procedure. What they don't get 
is they need all those data points in order to triangulate exactly who you are. Why? Because they just can't pull you up by punching a social security number in. It's a number that's used in multiple places by multiple entities. You're not the one who's exclusive to that number. Once did you start to understand yeah. that. Did you know the IRS does not use your SSN to identify your account? Yep. John, why don't you explain to the audience? Exactly the IRS, they, they can't do it because just like what you just said, they cannot do it because there aren't enough digits. <laughs> so because so, think about like this. Okay, the number has nine digits, right? So right. if you do an algebraic combination, you take 10 to the ninth, right? Because there's 10, digit, 10 numbers per digit, right? So there's nine of them. So 10 to the ninth power, that's a billion combinations of the SSN. So let's assume that you know, we're all using all of them, right? But that still doesn't cover the population, even though there's only a third of a billion people here. You got to think about all the companies using tax numbers, right? Yep. So it's way over a billion. So what the Easily. IRS does, yeah, what the IRS does is add in four letters. Now a letter has 26 different, you know, different variations, right? Right. So if you have four letters, you have 26 to the fourth power new additional combinations. So if you add that into the 10 to the ninth, you have 10 to the ninth times 26 to the fourth power combinations. So this is what the IRS does. They take your SSN and concatenate the first or the first four letters of your last name and that becomes your file identifier of the individual master file and business master files. Bingo. Yeah, man. It's right there. If you want to verify, you can go ask them. <laughs> yep. Bingo. Exactly correct. In fact, it, it, it's possible it, it, it's on the barcode. You ever see that the the the, the barcode uh -huh. that's on every single uh <laughs> my favorite letter from the IRS. The notice to lean letter. <laughs> right. it's, it's basically saying we're giving you we're giving you a notice. We're we're in the notice to lean. We're, uh, we hope you take notice of this. That that's right. basically what it is. It's just a, it's an empty threat. But the barcode, if you scan the damn barcode, it's it's the the alphanumeric file of your the, your master file is on there. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's how they get yeah. you, man. Yeah, I just wonder how deep it goes. Like what. I mean, I, I'm pretty diligent about looking at this stuff and being careful, but I know they got my data and all kinds. Of, I don't even know what they got. There's a there's a report at TransUnion. You can buy this. Uh, it's it's called a relational database. Yeah. Um, and so basically, here, here's how it works. Let's say you're 40 years old and you went to college and someone pulls up this relational database on you. He's doing an investigation or a credit inquiry or whatever he's going to do on you. This This data is being sold by TransUnion. So he will be able to see every relation connection you've had to people for the 40 years, yep. including that, that three days or that two weeks, let's say that two weeks, you stayed at your roommate's apartment after you got out of college that you had never been there ever before, or you, he's, he, at his new place, you stayed there for a, a couple of weeks. Your name wasn't on any utilities or anything. You just slept on the couch for a couple of weeks until you got your place. They have that data. Somehow. Uh, yep. I've seen the reports. It's scary. Yep. It's absolutely nuts, my man. Absolutely nuts. It, it is beyond insanity. What's, you know, it's absolutely beyond insanity. Yeah, so reports. I would just say on, on things like this, this vaccination stuff, I would use the, the data privacy as your, as your weapon there to, to defend yourself instead of the issue of vaccinations and, you know, and make them use the issue of indemnification as well. And, and make yep. them guarantee what they're promising. If you say this is for my health, okay, guarantee it then. And yeah, exactly. Do well. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly right. Uh, interesting, interesting show today, folks. John, want to thank you so much for being on with us. And um, and again, privacyfight.com, folks, go check it out. Next week, we're gonna have another action-packed show. So make sure you guys are tuned in for that. And with that being said, Thanks, we're man. over and out. All right. Take care. Cheers. Good show, buddy. That was a good one, man. Yep. All right, All right my friend. Take care. Good day. Bye. Cheers.